I have an exciting new collaboration coming up, which I'll reveal in a few weeks. I'll need to make many wooden discs for this project for the Buck and Formers, and several of them need angled edges. I'm going to make a dedicated disc sander so I can do this with ease and precision. I searched YouTube and found about 40 videos on making disc sanders, but none of them had the features I want. I want to be able to make a disc up to about 40 inches in diameter. I want to be able to angle the sanding disc so the wooden disc I'm sanding stays horizontal. I want easy and accurate adjustment for the disc diameter and the edge angle. I want it to be easy to build using a sander and materials I already have on hand. I'll start the design process with a sander. I have a nice compact and powerful 5 inch disc sander and I got a stiff hook and loof backing pad for it. Most backing pads are soft and any deflection would cause inaccuracies. There's a link for this pad in the description. The sander has threaded holes on each side for the handle and I'll use these to secure it to my fixture. The idea is to make a box which holds the sander securely with the front edge of the sanding disc flush with the box. Then the box will be hinged to the table. I'm going to make the box as wide as the table for the sander and I've decided to make it 22 inches square so it offers good support for even large discs. Okay, I have the fence set to 22 inches so I'll go ahead and make the cut. Now I'll cut off a strip 5 and 5 sixteenths wide. I want the center to be centered in this box we're making. So I've drawn a center line on the bottom board and I'm going to just visually center this disc on that line and I need to notch out this piece of wood so the face of the disc is flush with the front edge of the board. So I'll use a combination square to put some marks on this. And I'll notch this out with a jigsaw. So the disc is centered and the front edge of the disc is flush with the front edge of the board. The next thing I want to do is to lay out and drill the hole for the screw that holds the sander to the board. I've clamped a vertical board in place to support this disc and hold it absolutely vertical. So this is how the parts will fit together. And the next step is I want to drill a hole in this bottom board for the bolt that holds the center to the board. So I need to make a little transfer punch that screws into this threaded hole to make a mark on the lower board. Now we'll use this point to mark the hole we need in the piece of plywood. Okay, so I'll screw the transfer punch into place now. I'll get this disc positioned in the middle of the slot and held up tight against the vertical board. Then I'll tap this with a mallet and that makes a nice mark that shows me exactly where the hole has to go. Now I can drill the hole for the bolt. I'm going to drill a small pilot hole first. Then I'm going to drill halfway through from each size with the proper size drill. And I'm doing it this way to help prevent tear out on the soft wood. Okay, now we can bolt the sander to the board. So far so good. Now let's think about how this box with the sander in it is going to pivot on the base. 
My plan is to use two small hinges to hold the box with the motor in it to the main table of the machine, and these hinges will go pretty far out toward the edges to make it more stable and to give me more access. So there's a couple more things to think about before we set the hinges up. You can see that the disc rotates, and in this position, if we put a thin piece of wood against a sanding disc, the rotation of the disc will try and push the disc this way. It'll try and make the disc rotate, and that's not a good thing. So I can raise the working surface up by using more thicknesses of wood, and this is a very good height for a thin piece of wood, but this height doesn't work very well for a larger piece of wood. And I want this tool to be able to sand many different thicknesses of work. So probably the best compromise is to raise the working surface of the table up three quarters of an inch. And that will give me a pretty good height for both thicker pieces and also thinner pieces. So my plan is to build up another surface on top of this one with another piece of three quarter inch plywood. I've cut another piece of plywood which fits on top of this piece and this will space the hinges up to the optimum height. This piece is cut a little bit narrower to accommodate the back wall of the box. So when this butts up against the back wall, it's flush on the front surface. This new piece of wood is going to have to be notched out to fit around the sander for a couple of reasons. One is that the sander needs a little support. The two bolts that hold it give a good support in one direction, but it can still rotate this way. So my plan is to cut an opening in this that closely cradles the body of the sander and that will stabilize it. So to lay out that opening I'm going to use a block of wood and I put a piece of paper on the bottom piece of wood. I'm going to position this so it's a nice snug fit against the sander and my pencil can't reach the inside edge so I'll mark the outside edge on this and then I'll subtract one material thickness once I reach that point. And I'm going to go all the way around the edge of this sander, marking the size of the opening. Okay, so I'll pull this apart and I can mark that pattern that shows the area to be cut out. So we need to mark on the inside of this part one material thickness. Same thing here. Okay, so I'll cut this out with scissors, and then we'll transfer those lines onto the piece of plywood. So I'll get my jigsaw and cut this out. Okay, we'll put the parts together now. So this is all fitting together just the way I wanted it to. And this is a good time to figure out the height of the back wall of the box. I used a combination square to find out the height that's needed to match this second mounting area. And using that dimension, I've cut another piece of wood to the right dimension. So the back part of the box is ready to go. And this would be a good time to join this second piece of wood to the first piece underneath it. So I've laid out holes for the screws that will hold them together. So I'm going to drill pilot holes for those screws now. I'll take this apart. And I'll drill a clearance hole for the screws I'll be using. I'm using flathead drywall screws. So I'm going to use a countersink to chamfer the edge of the hole. Okay, so now I can join these together. I'll use clamps to make sure I have proper alignment. And now I can drive the screws to hold these boards together. So 
So now I can put the sander in place. So all this is fitting together beautifully. I want to put the back wall of the box into place next. And I want to put a hole in it so I can access the spindle lock so I can replace this disc if I ever need to. So I've laid out the center of the hole for access to the spindle lock. And I'll use a hole saw to make that hole. I'll drill a pilot hole all the way through first. Then I'm using an inch and a half hole saw to make the hole. I'm going to go part way through from this side and then flip it over to help eliminate tear out. And I'm going to check to see how all this fits together so that hole is perfectly located to allow access to the spindle lock. So the next thing I'm going to do is to screw these two boards together. So I've laid out four equally spaced holes and each hole is spaced three-eighths of an inch from the edge so it'll meet the center of the three-quarter inch plywood. So now I'll drill pilot holes for each screw. And now I'll countersink each hole so the screw heads fit flush. So now I can put these together. So I have the bottom of the box and the back wall finished. The next step is to make the front wall so I can measure the width needed with the combination square and using this dimension I can cut the piece of plywood that goes on the front edge. So here's a piece of wood cut to the right height. You can see it's exactly the same height as the back wall of the box and this goes on the front edge and so to fit this into place I have to notch it out around the disc on both sides. So I'll use a pencil to mark where the cutout is needed. And then using a jigsaw, I'll cut on these lines. So now you can see how these fit into place. So the next step is I'll use more screws to hold the front wall of the box into place. So the wooden pieces are fitted into place and it's time to fasten them with screws. My first thought was that I would need to use a long screw to go through two thicknesses of wood. But thinking about this a little farther, I realized I need to cut back this bottom layer of wood a little bit to make the hinge work properly. You'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to trim three quarters of an inch off all across here on the bottom layer of wood. And then I can use shorter screws to join these pieces to the base. So the first three sides of the box are completed and the last step will be to make the cover. I'm going to use thinner material for that. This is one quarter inch thick plywood. So this just fits into place like this. And the next step will be to drill the pilot holes for the screws and to notch out the area for the disc. So the box is just about finished. Just a few last details. I need to put a hole for the mounting screw in the top of the box. And I'll do that by using this little transfer punch we made earlier. And then I also need to notch out an area so I have access to the switch. So I'll make an oval hole in this area. Then the last step will be to attach both hinges to the box. I'm going to lay out the hole for the switch first. I've taken a scrap piece of paper and cut an oval hole in it. And I've set it up so that hole is centered when the edges of this paper touch the edges of the form. So all I need to do is to put the piece of wood in place and align the edges of my pattern with the edges of the piece of wood. And now I can mark the opening that I need to trim out. I'm going to use a one inch diameter hole saw to make two round holes. Then I'll clean up the area between them to make the oval slot. And I want to do this in a careful way because I'm trying to avoid tear out on this plywood. So I'm going to drill a pilot hole right in the center of each of these hole locations. Then I'll put this drill bit in the pilot hole. And I have another piece of scrap wood with the same size hole in it. And I'll feed this down over the drill bit and then clamp this into place. And now I'll make the hole with the hole saw. I want to get this plug out before it gets trapped in the hole saw. Now we can go through the cap for the box. Okay, and we'll take this slug out now. So the first hole is completed. 
I'll use the same technique with the second hole. So by doing it this way, I was able to get very clean edges on these holes with virtually no tear out whatsoever. So I'll use a saw to cut these points off, then we'll have a nice clean oval hole. So the oval hole is completed and I'll try it into place. And the fit up is excellent. So the next step is to lay out the hole for the second mounting bolt for the sander. So again, I'll use our little pointed transfer punch. I'll just screw that into place on the sander. And then I'll use a few screws to align this board properly. Then I'll tap it to mark it. And now I have the perfect target to use for drilling that hole. So with the two bolts holding the sander, plus that cradle that holds the body of it, this disc is really rigid inside the box. There's no movement between them whatsoever. So with the box finished, we're halfway through the project. In the next video, I'll make the table for the fixture, hinge the box to the table, devise a quick easy adjustment for the angle of the edge of the disc, and build the mechanism for controlling the disc diameter with precision. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified about new videos. If you like the work I'm doing, click the Patreon link at the end of the video, and you can see the different levels of support available. I'll see you next time. Thank you.